All right, welcome back. Today we're continuing our Let's Learn ABA series with shaping behavior. Shaping, of course, is reinforcing successive approximations of behavior. We're going to talk all about that today. It's something both RBTs and BCBAs need to know for their exam and in practice. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please like and subscribe. If you're looking for RBT materials, check out btexamreview.com. BCBA materials, check out behavioranalyststudy.com. We also have a YouTube membership if you'd like to support us further. Other than that, let's keep working hard, keep studying hard. Let's learn ABA. So our introduction slide, what is shaping? Shaping is differential reinforcement of approximations towards a terminal behavior. The keys in shaping are differential reinforcement and identifying approximations. Talk about, we're going to go over successive approximations, steps towards our terminal behavior, which of course is our final target behavior. How we use differential reinforcement, a quick refresher on what differential reinforcement is how we shape across and within topographies and the dimensions we can shape and of course limitations of shaping at the end so what is shaping well shaping is reinforcing approximations of behavior when we say approximations what we mean are just the different steps towards a terminal final behavior how do we do this well first we need to identify a change in the learner's environment meaning whatever behavior we're looking at we need to closely observe the client and look for any incremental change that we can reinforce. That's our entire goal with shaping. Is our behavior moving closer to how we want it to look for that final behavior? Two, decide if it's closer to the terminal behavior. Three, use differential reinforcement to reinforce the closer approximation. If it isn't closer, we put it on extinction. So you're always asking yourself, is the change closer to the behavior I want to see? This requires a really good, diligent eye on your part because you really need to be observant on what behavior you're looking for. And as we move closer to that final behavior, we're shaping and shaping and shaping and then putting on an extinction the behaviors that aren't closer. So it's really kind of a back and forth, a tug of war, a act of good observation to find these approximations and make sure we're delivering reinforcement in that moment. For example, a baseball player wants to throw 90 miles an hour. Let's say their present level is 70 miles an hour. So whenever that player throws above 70 miles an hour, we reinforce. 71 miles an hour, force. 80, reinforce. 82, reinforce. 87, reinforce. As the level increases, we put lower responses on extinction. So if we are at 82 miles an hour and the player throws 71, we're going to put that on extinction. But if they throw 84, reinforce. You can see this is not meant to be done in exact increments. People make that mistake where they think shaping is kind of a stair step, right? Or a staircase upwards, right? Where each increment has to be a perfect amount in between, like 70, 75, 80, 85. It doesn't work like that, okay? Behavior is not that predictable. We are looking for all opportunities to slowly but surely increase those approximations with shaping. So what are successive approximations? Required amount of change for delivering reinforcement for responses closer to the terminal behavior. And that's for you to decide, really. The BCBAs and then the RBTs are there to implement it. But we're looking, what is, what is the amount of change you need to see to deliver reinforcement for responses closer to the terminal behavior? That's really what you're looking for. So whenever a response that is closer to the terminal behavior occurs, we deliver reinforcement. It's a very simple intervention, but it takes a lot of skill and precision. Okay? It's a simple intervention takes a lot of skill and precision. Remember, our terminal behavior is the final target behavior. Well, let's look at this picture. Step one, Okay, we're looking at scribbles here. So we're looking to reinforce longer scribbles. And if you look at terminal behavior, we want straight lines. So the stars represent reinforcements. So in step one, they're just reinforcing long scribbles. Then in step two, we're looking for longer scribbles that don't cross. So now we're closer to our lines. Step three, even longer uncrossed scribbles that are more straight than before. Four, longer. Now they're horizontal-oriented lines. Five, longer horizontal lines within our criterion tolerance as we're moving closer. So you can see as we get closer to our terminal behavior, reinforcing, 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 finally getting to six. That's all we're doing. Again, simple intervention, but it requires 
precision, accuracy, and really, really good observation. So what dimensions can be shaped? Well, almost anything, really. That's the great thing about shaping. We can have a behavior we already want to see. We'll talk about this. And we just want to increase, let's say, the intensity of it, right? Or the length of it, okay? Or how often it happens. Well, we can shape those things. We can shape topography, how it looks. We can shape rate, how often it occurs. Latency, duration, response time, even magnitude. You can shape motor movements, number of tasks completed, attending, how quickly someone eats, how loud someone speaks, how many hours someone practices, how long in between drinks. Don't limit yourself with shaping, okay? Shaping can be used for so many things. It's such a powerful tool, okay, in our repertoire that we can shape almost anything, right? So let's talk really quickly about what we mean shaping across and within. Because if we're shaping, we can shape all these different dimensions, but we don't necessarily always want to do that. Sometimes we still just want to shape how that behavior looks, right? So if we're shaping across behaviors, we're trying to change how the response looks. We're choosing certain responses and reinforcing those while putting other select responses on extinction. So this is this is kind of like what you typically think about when we're shaping, when we're shaping, right? If we're shaping language and we need someone to say bubble, say buh, then bub, bubble, we're shaping across, right? We're, we're choosing certain responses, reinforcing those as they get closer putting the other responses on extinction. Within topographies is, let's say we already have our behavior. So we have a learner who already says bubble, but now we want to change something about the way they say it or how long they say it for. So let's say when they say bubble, they say it really, really loud. Well, we want to shape within that topography to reduce the volume of saying bubble. Let's say when they say bubble, they say bubble, and they say it way too long. The duration of the word is long. So we can shape within topography to reduce the duration. So shaping can be used when you have a behavior, because we're going within, or our standard idea of shaping when we're trying to get to that final behavior. Shaping across and within is important. Now, RBTs don't necessarily need to know this for their exam. BCBAs do. Okay, So make, you under, under, make sure you understand this concept. Not only is it important for the exam, but it's really, really powerful when you're in the field working with different types of behavior. What are our limitations? Well, as always, we always have limitations for what we do. Okay? So one, shaping is time consuming. If we are shaping a very uh, difficult, intensive behavior, there can be a lot of long approximations. It'll take a while to get to where we want. Okay, Depending on how impacted your client might be this this could be a really long drawn out process so it can be very time consuming two approximations in progress consistent we might make huge leaps in progress and then all of a sudden all of our approximations are, are three steps backwards right we've gone backwards but we can't reinforce those it's not how shaping works okay so we've made a bunch of progress and then we're going backwards so it can be really inconsistent if you're missing sessions or maybe this, this, they have a history of regression, whatever it might be, it can be inconsistent. Three, you must continuously monitor behavior when shaping in order to identify approximations. It takes a lot of observation, a lot of direct work with the client to make sure we catch these approximations. It's very time intensive. Okay? It's, it's very observation heavy. Four, it is easy to reinforce the wrong approximation or an undesired approximation. Because when you're looking for the slightest change, it's easy to get that wrong. The harmful behavior can also be shaped. You've got to be very careful about when you're delivering reinforcement. Uh, the example they give in the book is, say, Sally wants ice cream. And she says, Dad, can I have some ice cream? And he ignores her. She says, Dad, can I have some ice cream? He ignores her. So she screams really loudly, Dad, can I have some ice cream? Well, now he reinforces that. Well, he's reinforced the wrong approximation. So in the future, she's just screaming louder and louder for ice cream. You got to be very aware of these things. These limitations are important to understand. It makes us better at what we do. And then finally, just some aspects of shaping. Of course, differential reinforcement is a vital part of shaping. Reinforce behaviors you want to see, but other behaviors, extinction, a primary tool. Extinction induced variability. Don't worry about this too much. I thought it was important to point out though. But non-reinforcement of a response can cause closer approximations to your behavior. And how? Because when you aren't reinforcing 
a response, well, it forces the learner to engage in different responses. So by chance, sometimes we can get a response that is closer to the one we want to see. And then it leads to response differentiation. Okay, So when differential reinforcement is applied consistently to our responses, different responses are going to emerge from old responses and form new response classes. So a new response class is formed with responses, but they possess some characteristics of the previously reinforced responses. So remember, response differentiation is, is similar to stimulus different uh, stimulus discrimination, except in stimulus discrimination, we're, we're choosing between two stimuli. In response differenti differentiation, we're choosing between two responses. Through shaping, we can get them to choose the response we want to see. All right, that is shaping behavior. As always, don't overcomplicate these things. Make it easy on yourself. Learn it in a way that you're going to remember for your exam and you're going to remember in practice. Okay. Check out btexamreview.com for RBT materials, behavioranalyststudy.com for BCBA materials. As always, work hard, study hard, and I will see you soon.